My daughter found this in our local library's free to take home bin. It's pretty beat up. That's probably why they were giving it away. The first thing I noticed on the cover was that Sears and Roebuck advertised themselves as the cheapest supply house on earth. Check out the picture of their Chicago building on the back cover. Notice the horse and buggies. 1902 was six years before Henry Ford would introduce his Model T. There is so much cool stuff in this catalog. Check out this description of how gold-filled watch cases are made. And on the next page, there's a full selection of watchmaker's tools. I think the cherubs drawn in around the watches are cool. This guy right here looks like he's up to no good. Roughly $28 would buy you a complete optician's kit. $1 in 1902 is worth about $30 today. The average wage in 1902 was 22 cents an hour. The average worker made between $200 and $400 a year. So this kit would have been quite an investment. I thought this item in the book department was interesting. An innovation that has long been vaguely wished for, but which has only in the present day found practical expression in its actual production. Every word spoken by our Lord printed in red. I like this pencil eraser shaped like a cartridge. That would be a good 357 Magdad swag item. The bicycles in the catalog were relatively expensive. This one for $8.95 would be over $260 in today's money. And that was the least expensive model. I dig this twisted metal bicycle screwdriver. I'll have to keep an eye out for one of those at the sales. There is so much cool stuff in the firearms section. Check out this Quackenbush bicycle rifle. Just the rifle for cyclists. The ad for this Winchester rifle mentions the new 3030 caliber. I wonder if anyone in 1902 imagined how popular the 3030 lever action would become. In contrast to the bicycles, you could get a revolver for less than three bucks. That's less than $90 today, which would be a great price for a revolver. Now remember, this is a catalog from 1902. John Browning wouldn't invent his famous Model 1911 45 caliber pistol for another nine years. This Colt automatic pistol would have been very high tech in 1902. I like the line about the 38 caliber rounds having the range and force of a rifle. Smokeless gunpowder was a brand new thing in 1902. This catalog has one section for black powder cartridges. And a separate section for smokeless powder. As a side note, 357 Magnum did not exist until the 1930s. And 9mm Parabellum was just being developed by Luger in Germany in 1902. You could even order dynamite out of the catalog, you know, for stump removal. I thought the page of fishing lures was cool. I was surprised that rubber lures existed in 1902. The medicine section was also interesting. Here you have your perfectly harmless arsenic. along with reliable worm cakes. And here we have the electric belt department. Want to guess what that electrified lasso goes around? I'm terrified and curious at the same time. Looks like the belt is working for this guy. I really like the full-size illustrations of the pocket knives. Remember, 50 cents in 1902 is like 15 bucks today. Since 1902 was before the automobile and widespread electric power, the tool section of the catalog is limited. 
Most of this equipment is foot powered. Here's the page with rulers. The catalog has a pretty extensive selection of hand planes. I thought this ad for a cast iron hammer was pretty funny. Cast iron hammers are positively no good. We have a few of these hammers in stock, which we would rather keep than sell to our customers. If you must have them, we will sell you a light one for eight cents or a full size for 10 cents. You will be sorry if you buy one. Here's some ratcheting screwdrivers and egg beater drills and some braces. The drill and ratchet brace is pretty cool. Alligator wrenches and Coase type adjustable wrenches. I like this wood butcher set for $5.28. There is also more extensive toolkits. The blacksmith tools are in a separate section. I found the coolest item in the catalog on page 612. Here we have an actual Acme anvil, just like Wild E. Coyote used to buy. I found the windmill section interesting. Electricity was scarce outside the big cities in 1902. Check out these windmill gear sets. Another source of power was the horse sweep. I think today's units of horsepower have their origins in machines just like these. There are several pages devoted to wood and coal-fired ranges and heaters. The carriage section is also extensive. There's only a couple of pages of kids' toys. I dig the bear bank. Check out this hookah I found in the pipe section. The ladies and men's hats and clothing give you an idea of fashion circa 1902. I really enjoy paging through this catalog. You can find similar reprinted catalogs on Amazon for less than $20. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Every time I open up this catalog, I find something I didn't see before.